بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما اخلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي الى صراطك المستقيم وعلى اله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم I send my greetings to all Muslims. I would like to speak on the events that have taken place in recent days. At all times, by divine will, the Muslim has always been confronted with trials. Trials which the Qur'an certifies are part of the life of a Muslim. The Prophet of Islam, Sayyiduna Muhammad whom Allah erected as the best of created beings, he is the one who had the most trials during his life. Allah chose the Prophet and sent him to humanity. For this reason, he constitutes divine mercy on all generations, all universes, in short, on all creatures, as the verse attests, Despite everything, the Prophet has already lived and endured all sorts of trials, obstacles, and even other undesirable events that can befall a Muslim. He kept in mind that those close to Allah are subject to trials here below. Nevertheless, he armed himself with his will to accomplish his mission. These events refer us to the verse of the Quran, this should not just remind us of the reality of mourning, but also that we come from Allah, and to Him we will return. In this context, faced with a test affecting the Islamic world in general, and the Muslim in particular, the latter, wherever he is, having grasped the meaning of this verse, should be able to endure this test. Anyone who lost his life in a tragedy of this nature could be among the martyrs. As for the one who was spared, Allah will reward him in the hereafter. The Prophet spoke about so-called natural disasters. On the day of resurrection, or the day of Qiyamah, the Lord will send angels to the victims of these disasters. These angels will reassure them by telling them that this day of the last judgment will be synonymous with peace. Among the natural disasters claiming victims, the Prophet has cited earthquakes, fires, floods, and other similar tragedies. Which brings us to the message that I would like to convey to Muslims around the world. A message addressed, in particular, to the victims of the disaster in Turkey and Syria. The recommendation I address to the entire Muslim community is the one I make to myself. I encourage Muslims to endure the trials of the Lord. This is a terrible event. 
because an earthquake had already taken place in Turkey and had killed more than 18,000 people in 1999. The tremors were felt as far away as Istanbul. The tragedy that occurred in 2023 is one of the earthquakes that claimed the most victims. Today, more than 28,000 people were killed with fears that the toll will increase. A reality that shows the gravity of the event. It should be considered that this drama is not limited only to these two countries. Other Muslim countries have already been hit in the past. Indonesia, for example. These events must be lived with philosophy. For a Muslim to live with philosophy means, first of all, to accept the divine will but also accept that hardships are part of his life. These trials can occur if the Lord finds that certain sins of the Muslim can become obstacles in the hereafter. In this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can then decide to expiate them by making him leave these trials. It can also be a way to test your faith. After the earthquake, I heard an atheist say, that just recently someone burned a copy of the Quran publicly. He had noticed that there had been no earthquakes in the country where it happened, when there should be. On the contrary, the earthquake occurred in Muslim countries. This type of remark, if we're not careful, can destabilize the faith of the Muslim. Those who do not believe in God, or those who fight Islam, use it to create, at every opportunity, a breach to attack Islam, the faith of Muslims, and try to sow doubt in them. The Muslim who is certain of having learned the teachings of the Prophet وسلم, and of being imbued with them, follows his sunnah, can never be destabilized. We learn from the story of the Prophet وسلم, that his son Ibrahim left this world at a very young age. At that time, some tried to create doubt by drawing a parallel between the story of Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail with that of the Prophet and his son Ibrahim. These comments were made in order to sow doubt in the mind of Muslims. But the companions of the Prophet, and the only for will that everyone could testify to, had rejected these words. They believed in the Prophet and his message, as well as in the ideology of Islam. The ideology of Islam is that of the Quran. The Prophet, peace be upon him, did not create or utter anything by himself, as said in the verse, Every Muslim today should keep these words in mind. In case if an individual seeks to create doubt in his mind, he will know how to work to preserve his faith. This is my recommendation to any Muslim living in Turkey and Syria faced with this situation. As for the rest, all these events are part of the signs of the end of times. The Prophet, peace be upon him, predicted them. He had also indicated that the troubles would be numerous. We find that to be the case today. Disorders that spares no one. This earthquake is one of the disasters that we must take philosophically. It should be known that there is a source of information from which comes the information which concerns the world behind the events predicted by the Prophet and forming part of what is now called universal discourse are recorded in manuals whose access is restricted to the elect of Allah. They know that earthquakes are programmed in advance. We know that earthquakes have always happened around the world. But those causing a high number of victims are programmed in advance. One was programmed in Europe, another in Asia. The third was also programmed in Asia, but in very isolated regions close to the coast. These are three earthquakes that must occur and which are related to the mission of the end of time. Those who study the science of hadith have learned that when Imam al-Mahdi appears in Mecca, 
An army from Syria will rise to attack him. But this army, once arrived between Mecca and Medina, will be swallowed by the earth. Earthquakes are events that create breaches and prepare this kind of situation. It should be kept in mind that this kind of event does not only occur in Western countries or in non-Muslim countries. It should be understood that this can also happen in Muslim countries. For example, if an earthquake were to occur in a country like Saudi Arabia, it should not shock Muslims. It should be understood that this is one of the signs of the end of time. The same for Japan, Turkey, and Syria. This should not shock Muslims. Some stand up, perhaps, to try to sow doubt in the hearts of Muslims or even to taunt them. These are certainly individuals who do not believe in God. They must know that whatever is to happen, God has programmed it in advance and will happen when the time comes. Those who rely on the universal discourse of the Prophet in the hidden domain are not surprised by the events. Each of them knows in advance that a day will come when these consequences will occur. Consequences of events not necessarily caused by man, but which the Lord will bring about through natural disaster. By way of closing the speech, let us take the example of a country like the United States of America, a country recognized as the world's leading power, particularly for its army. In the manual quoted above, and in which is recorded the universal speech of the Prophet, it is written with regard to the United States of America that whatever the military power directed against this country, the weapons can never annihilate them. Weapons will never destroy the United States. Rather, it will be the work of natural disasters. This is what is written in Raib's manual and is part of the Universal Discourse. Today, those who seek to confront the United States with arms should know that this manual states that no weapon can annihilate them. It will rather be through natural disasters. This teaches us that the Lord has planned everything in the universal speech of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Everything that should occur here on earth until the end of time is written there. This shows the Muslim, wherever he is on earth, that whatever happens to him should be taken philosophically. He should be grateful to the Lord. You must know that everything the Prophet, peace be upon him, predicted, everything that was announced in the Quran through the Prophet, his companions, or any other individual conveying the message of Islam, regardless of duration, these predictions will never change. It is therefore important that everyone takes these events with philosophy. May Muslims follow Allah's instructions to the Prophet, as he said to him, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Prophecy, prophecy, his time has come, his time has arrived. The one Rasulullah has told us about his mission at the end of time.